Hello again, we're back. Um, so today uh, I would like to continue with our ESP32, but I would not like to continue with my uh, standard for, uh, standard library version for now, the IDF. I want to do something else. I want to gonna have a look at the no standard version, the bare metal. That's a bit trickier to do. Uh, it's a bit fiddlier and especially for my background as a back-end engineer where you're used to having an operating system, the standard one is a bit more comfortable. But um, yeah, in, in the last, uh, last iteration with the stepper motors, I started to, to need a bit more resolution in time. Uh, as far as I can tell, the minimum resolution for time pauses for the, for the ESP32 in standard mode was one millisecond. Might be wrong. If I'm wrong, please tell me in the comments. Um, but I'll have, I'd just like to have a look at the no standard one and see if we can do all the things we do um, in the standard and see what that looks like in the no standard. So uh, there is a template for that. Uh, let me see if I can find that. Uh, ESPRS template or something. There it is, uh, and that's uh, uh, yeah, basically a Git repository. It works with Cargo Generate, and it will create a, a more or less ready to go um, uh, initialized version of a temp of a of a Rust ESP32 bare metal program. Generally, I'm not very fond of templates like that. I prefer usually to really understand what I'm building and to assemble everything. It's better to learn as you assemble than to get everything ready-made and then later figure out that you actually didn't understand. But on the other hand, uh, as we will see, uh, there are so many different versions that need to align exactly. Uh, yeah, figuring that out getting that right is not really getting you much it will change anyway and it's uh, just costs a lot of time so i have uh, embraced those for now so um let's start with the hello world of um, of uh, embedded programming and see if we can do a blinky so blink a led uh let's start with creating our our uh project so that's uh, ESP template as I said here. So cargo generate ESPRS, that's the organization, and then slash ESP template. Oops. Project name, let's call it uh, ESP32 no standard. Fair enough. I still have the ESP32 C3. Let's look at the advanced things. Alloc, that's an interesting one. Uh, usually, um, if we have a standard library, we can obviously allocate memory and deallocate memory. Um, however, for um, for um, for non-standard, that might not be the case. Uh, you can choose actually. It if you want to have something that runs basically forever. It can happen that if you allocate and deallocate memory, the memory slowly gets fragmented, it runs out of memory, and then at some point it crashes. And for embedded, soft, uh, embedded devices, that can be really bad. So if you can get away with not allocating at all, that you allocate everything you need at the beginning, and for many applications you can, because you know exactly what it's gonna, gonna do, uh, that might be better. However, I'm not gonna do that, I'm just gonna add allocate it's going to make life a little bit easier on me and uh, maybe we can explore later what it would take to remove that. Uh, no dev containers for me, don't need that. No Vokwi either. No CI. Logging, yeah, why not? Uh, enable Wi-Fi. Um, I'm just going to say yes. I'm not going to start with Wi-Fi now. I'm, I'm going to do that in... Uh, in the next or one of the next episodes um, because it's really hard to add manually later 
there are some uh, unreleased crates so it refers to git repositories you'll see it, it is a little bit messy so i'll just add it and ignore it, the wi-fi for now all right so it has a made a, a folder no standard let's do a cargo build just to see if it's all working um that should take a while one thing i noticed but that that's not really for this yet but for the wi-fi that it simply doesn't work if i don't run it as a release build yeah i get some super weird illegal access error if i run in debug mode so i'm trying to remind myself every time i do a build i add the release so it will build in release mode because yeah it, if, if not you get that weird error and uh, it bit me several times now and I couldn't figure it out all right um, this is not quite the blink yet let's look at the code all right yeah I trust them so we have a main and there is actually quite a lot of stuff given that uh, you'd say yeah it, it doesn't do anything um, increase the font a little bit uh, first of all in the end you 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 have a main function uh, it does some boilerplatey stuff uh, it initializes the Wi-Fi up to a point which we're gonna ignore so let's just remove that for now and do we need the timer I don't think so uh, oh, oh I only need to forgot to this one okay uh, I, I'm gonna ignore the unused imports for now you see here that here it will in initialize a heap uh, and it will use the allocator for that so the, if you don't use an allocate you can remove that i think but doesn't matter for now so what this will do it will print a log message it will just do a print line of a hello world and then it will loop wait for half a second and keep on printing loop all right let's see what this does uh, maybe need to check if my camera or this camera is working yeah that looks all right so let's see uh, if that works cargo esp flash flash that looks all right it uploads ah, wait 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 no 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 oh, i can't interrupted now my entire shell disappeared <laughs> okay okay uh, what I, what I uh, wanted to add is oh it is now paraphrasing me that's not what i want uh, i wanted to add release because this is annoying did i press some kind of i'm gonna figure this out i'll be right back <laughs> okay i figured it out uh, i did ctrl c for to interrupt the flash and if you press ctrl a bunch of times then it will enable dictation mode and then uh, you can't use a mac while talking because it's typing through <laughs> learn something today so let's do this again the release i'm not sure if it worked out all right now you can tell how much tinier it is than the standard it's really small which is nice so let's see what uh, what happens if we monitor it is p flash monitor this one let's reset it 
and we see the hello world and we see the info uh, message and we see the loop every half second so this is all fine uh, looking good uh, so a blinky um, the first thing we need to add is to add a general what we call a pin driver and so we have the peripherals which which are basically the uh, yeah all the peripherals on the on the on the controller so um, amongst which are the pins so let's create a pin driver and that you do that like io new and we put in the um, mm, 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 mm. Let me check the peripherals the gpio i think Let mute i suppose i always this i think it needs some imports and it needs the io mux as well also into peripherals and io okay uh then we need to get the pin out of those so let's take pin four I think that's the green LED on the multicolor LED. So it's not the white one you see here. There is in the middle one, a bigger one that can um, flash multicolor and it's uh, connected to pin three, four and five. Three is red, four is green, five is blue. So let's take the, the green pin. So that's something like io.pins. GPIO4 uh, and then we need to do something with it and we need to do it create an output pin so let pin 4 equals that dot uh, um, let's see what type we get here we get an unknown pin and we get into push pull output yeah that was the one i had in mind or maybe uh, so in the loop what we can do now is pin for the toggle i think yes uh, and i need to make the pin mutable and i think maybe this one doesn't need to be mutable and then it wants a result so i'll just unwrap it all right let's see what this does a nice green blinking light so um that's a little bit distracting All right, so uh, that works pretty nicely. Uh, so if your program has this kind of shape, you do some setup, then you have a loop and that's it. Then this is really nice. Uh, if you uh, can distill the essence of your program like that. But that pretty quickly doesn't really work. Uh, right now, for example, this delay of half a second it's not doing anything right there's one core and that's just spinning this it's just waiting uh, so you can't schedule multiple things even if i would do like want to blink two leds if they have the same rhythm it's not so bad but if i want to do that on a different frequency i can do some calculations and do it in a single loop it turns it into some weird fist bus thing i suppose but uh yeah it it doesn't scale uh, it gets really hard to cram all those uh, uh all that logic in in one big loop so for that uh in the next uh in the, in the next uh, installment, I would like to add Embassy. 
and that's like a, a async runtime similar to something like Tokyo but a, a, a lot more basic so we can use async uh, because like in before we had the standard library and then we could we could use free artos threads which are uh, preemptive thread so you can just add a thread and you leave it to the the operating system if you can call it that to schedule different threads and uh, Artos has a pretty sophisticated way of assigning priority so you can say like this is very time critical so if this one's waiting always prioritize it etc uh, async as you probably know if you're if you're really new into the rust async i would suggest to find uh, s some source to learn about that because uh, i am not going to do that and also not the greatest source on that so um but a async in, in rust is uh, is uh, cooperative multitasking so you end up in your code you need to say when you are relinquishing control of the flow uh, and then probably you'll get it back at some point so that will be next um but for now see you around and uh, next one will be pretty soon i think bye